Many malls on Long Island were struggling even before the pandemic hit, and now one major mall is telling tenants it's time to go. The Sunrise Mall has been a mainstay in Massapequa since 1973. Hi everybody, Anthony here with Aces Adventures and welcome back to another episode, another dead mall and another story that's all too familiar to tell. Uh, it's nice to be back with you all. This is the technical 50,000 subscriber special. Um, I know that in 2022 I promised you a ton of content and I have not fully lived up to that expectation as I had mentioned in the previous video. I've just been very busy with my, with my personal life, a lot going on, work has been insanely busy, but not going to bore you with all of that. Here I am with another episode and I have some bangers coming up, uh, which we'll talk about in just a little while. Anyways, to the mall at hand. We are in Massapequa, New York, the Long Island area, uh, just to the right of Manhattan in um, the Sunrise Mall, and once again in Massapequa, New York. Actually, ironically, if things go well, no spoilers, but this is a spoiler, the next video will also be on a Sunrise Mall in a completely different part of the country. Stay tuned. So the Sunrise Mall um, is a story that is all too familiar to those of you who follow my channel and are interested in the death of the American shopping mall as it continues in 2022 to slowly and painfully fade off into the distance. This is a mall that is waiting to be put out of its misery. And I want to say something that I may have said before, but if I have not said before, this I'm saying it. <laughs> so when I cover these places and I put out these videos and I title them as, as a dead mall, a couple things here. The only reason why I title them as a dead mall is because it's what people search for or what search for rather. Is it what it is? Yes, it is. It's a dying shopping mall in the United States that is um, almost ready to be put out of its misery. I know there are folks in these videos who may work at these establishments and think that I'm putting these places down, but it could not be further from the truth. This is me getting to these places and making a photo documentation and a video documentation of these places so that once they're gone, we can remember them. And maybe, maybe once all of us are long dead and gone, people can look back on these and see what the retail scene and what what things used to be like in the U.S. in the 90s, 2000s, so on and so forth, and maybe make better decisions about how to build their um, their territories and you know who knows what the future holds for this country. It's pretty crazy in the U.S. in general, but but you know so if you're watching this and you work at this mall, just please know that um, I don't want you to lose your jobs. I don't want these malls to close, but seeing that they are closing, it's my job to get out to these places and tell you the story of these malls before they are gone. And it's important that we do this. And for the past six years, this has been my mission to document as many of these as possible. So 
Um, babbling on here, let's talk a little bit about the actual history of the Sunrise Mall. So this mall opened in 1973, so it's just about uh, 50 years old. Actually, it just had its it would, it would have just had its it's coming up on its 50th birthday here uh, in the next year. It was originally um, anchored by J.C. Penney, which of course is closed. Um, a department store called Gertz, which I'm not too familiar with. If you're a local and you remember what Gertz was and Stearns, also please let me know. And then, of course, it ended up being a Sears. Um, Macy's and then E.J. Corvette, later Abraham and Strauss, and then Stearns, and then a Walmart, which we'll get into, um, were also on the property. And, of course, as you can see here as we're walking towards the end near the Macy's, um, this has the really, really cool and very rare first time I have seen it, vintage Macy's. He's fine. So pretty neat um, to, to see that in, in a mall. So the mall currently still has a Dick Sporting Goods, which has which has its um, mall entrance shuttered. Uh, it had a Raymore and Flanagan's. I don't think I saw that open, but I could be wrong. I didn't check that too thoroughly. And a Dave and Buster's, which does still have its mall entrance um, accessible. Uh, it was remodeled in 1991, and then it was acquired by the Westfield Group in 2005. Um, and then in May 2012, there was a export fitness that opened up uh, for the first time in the mall. Um, the mall has been owned by Westfield just up until recently um, in, uh, two, in 2021, just the beginning of 2021. It was sold um, to Urban Edge Properties, who is the current owner. And it was sold for $29.7 million, which I'm sure is far below what the original asking price uh, was for the mall. It's funny, too, how these properties, like the value of them just goes down and down and down. And the actual value of the materials we're in seem to change, um, you know, like not so much that the, the building itself is not so much worth nearly as much as it once was. It's more so the land that it's on, um, kind of like how McDonald's is where McDonald's owns all their own real estate and is the largest real estate holder in the world. Kind of like that. These, these malls kind of change from being about the neon and the brick and mortar of them to more so about the property themselves and what what can be done from a physical standpoint, i.e. like changing it to a mixed development, so on and so forth. So um, the, the funny thing about this mall too is that it had a Walmart for an anchor, which is really rare. Um, that's only happened a hand number of times, uh, a handful of times that I can remember in my travels visiting malls and whatnot. And um, it closed in 2015. And of course, that obviously is not good for traffic. I'm sure traffic was already low at, at that time, but um, Walmart, ironically, we, we, sometimes we say that Walmart can kill small rural, mall, rural malls, um, but this is not a rural mall at all. It's in a major metropolitan area or on the outskirts of uh, anyways. Any, you know, the New York metropolitan area is, is, is large and um, whatnot. So, so current day, um, the mall is basically on its deathbed and there, there's really no reason for it to be open. You know, when I research these places and look online, I am never really fully sure what to expect or how to feel when I actually get to them because you see different photos, but the photos don't really give you the true vibe until you get to the mall. And when I walked in this place and I could hear the buzzing lights and I took one look down the hallway, I knew that like, oh shit, like this place is not doing well. Um, and it's really only a matter of time. Now, as you saw in the opening clip, the koi fish, which uh, kind of became famous uh, uh, virally online through, I think, maybe TikTok or something, um, are gone, which was kind of a bummer. I didn't get out here in time to see those. Um, but the mall is literally on its last leg, and the owners, Urban Edge, are quite quite literally pushing people out the door. Uh, they're not renewing leases, and when I was walking through this property uh, on a Thursday, um, there were several of the few remaining places left that had signs on their front of their business that said that they were in the process of moving or would be moving uh, rather soon to a new location. So it's really only a matter of time uh, before this place shutters, and I'm glad that I got to check it out. Uh, from an aesthetic standpoint, there is not much to see, but the fact that it was so dead is what really made it appealing. Um, I, of course, prefer the more old-style, older 80s malls, which are... Far and few between nowadays. Um, there are still some out there that I haven't gotten to, but a lot of them now kind of have this late 90s, early 2000s, kind of like whitewashed, pale color look to them um, and don't have a ton of visual appeal to them. But still cool to see them um, and really see just, my gosh, how far um, they have fallen. You can tell as you walk around, you can you notice what the different storefronts were and whatnot. 
and uh, really get a sense of uh, just in how, how bad a shape this mall is really in. So this mall most definitely will not last till the end of the year. So again, another place that I, I swear after the Grim Reaper Ace comes through, it seems like I seems like my visit and these places are soon closed afterwards so hopefully i'm not like um i'm not like cursing these places um you know when i come into them but i think the writing is on the wall so um that's about it for the information on the mall i never like to go too deep uh, usually me and sal cover a lot of the same territory and i'm sure he wants to get out here before it closes and he'll give you a much more uh, accurate and in-depth uh look i just kind of kind of jazz you up with some cool music and uh, some visuals and kind of let Sale fill in the gaps there with his work, with his incredible work that he does So, uh, over at the DMOD. Um, by the way, if you're not part of the, the group, um, we are uh, reunited once again. I'm happy to be part of the Dead Malls of Discord server again. I'll leave a link in the description below to join us. We do all kinds of cool things. If you want to get personal with us creators and know us on a more personal level, um, that's a good place to do so. We have um, we do live chats, we do game nights, we do all kinds of stuff. It's a really great community where you can get to know us once again on, on a more personal level. Uh, I would love to meet as many of my fans as possible. I'm um, just going to talk for a brief couple minutes here before I get out of here about the future of, or the, the plans for the rest of 2022 with the channel. Um, I know I have said it multiple times, but it's finally going to happen. I am getting to Texas next. That's my next date. There are four or five malls that I want to hit down there. Um, I'll let you guys take some guesses as to where I'm going, but there are a couple of gems in Texas <clears throat> excuse me, um, that I want to get to before they close and a couple that are not in danger of closing as far as I know, but I want to get to um, as soon as possible. So Texas is the next goal. The one nice thing about my job is I can fly very cheaply. For example, I flew to New York City to film this mall for 20 bucks. So it's one of the nice uh, insider perks of working at the, um, the airlines. Um, it's been a crazy summer. I've been extremely busy with DJing a wedding every single Saturday in my full-time job. Um, hopefully that's going to slow down a little bit. I'll have some more time to get out. Um, and I want to get to Texas and a few other places like I had mentioned. Uh, we are at 51,000 subscribers. Unbelievable. Thank you so much to all those of you who have been with me since the start. Welcome to all of my new subscribers. And I'm going to leave a couple links down below here for my Instagram and also for my Patreon account. Uh, this channel makes no money. Um, it is a self-funded channel because I use music to fulfill these videos. Um, so I often get copyright strikes, not like bad ones that hurt my channel, just demonetization ones. Um, so I don't make any money off this channel. It's just a labor of love that I do. So if you want to support me and help me be able to see more places, Patreon is the best way to do so. Um, once again, this is a free channel with free content and, um, patreon.com slash Aces Adventures. Always super appreciated. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video. I hope you enjoy my channel. Once again, please follow me on Instagram at Aces Adventures one for lots of uh, pictures I post and I will keep you updated on what's next for the channel. Um, enjoy the rest of the video. This is Anthony with Aces Adventures. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your month, and I will talk to you all soon with a brand new video.